Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Ibble. Make sure you guys download the app, follow me, and talk to me on there. <laughs> do we have a do we have a theme for this show? Well, Ariel Scostella, <laughs> uh, we're just talk about everything. So I'm down. thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You're in Austin. Yes. Uh, we were just hanging out with Buck right outside the room. We just filmed one with him as well. Love him. Yeah, I didn't know you guys were like good friends like buddy, that. Buddy, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, we talk awesome. about everything. We talk about the gays. We're like we're like the older gener. I mean, he's the older old generation, and I'm like the mid generation, and you're like the second mid generation, and then like the craziest after us. Wait, how old are you? Thirty five. Don't say that. One. Oh yeah, I'm a pretty- <laughs> <laughs> Edit. I'll um- be thirty six. That's a good age though. I'm Is like it? genuinely looking forward to my thirties. Like best time of my life so far. Good. It is. Everyone yeah. says that. It's true. Yeah. Because it's you finally start making money. You don't give a shit what anyone else thinks about you anymore. Yeah. Which... Yeah. I came out as a Trump supporter and I'm done with every all the bullshit. Good. I dropped half of my friends. Well, they dropped me and then I was gonna drop them anyway, probably. Yeah. And I kept friends that were actually friends. Like you, Sydney, Tim Pool, made better friends. People hate that we're friends. You really, why do they hate that we're let's well, start talking people, about that? Some people, not <laughs> we'll everyone. Hate that we're friends. Only people we don't like, you know yeah, what I mean? So who it's cares like, about them? yeah, yeah, Fuck crazy them. lefties. <laughs> I'm sure fucking hate it, and you know, people, people love to talk shit to us because we actually have principles and we stand on what we believe, and yeah. you know, it, it's the same thing with Buck. We were just talking about how there's a list of things that we are supposed to say as trans people, lesbians, LGBT mm-hmm. in general, and yep. like you step one toe out of line, and it's like you are sacrificed off a fucking cliff. Like it's crazy, Lit- literally. Yeah. Literally in this case, yeah. yeah. I mean, but I, I do see some comments on your videos sometimes. Like, well, I'll comment on the video and people are like, why are you here, transphobe? So some people that are your fans probably actually think I'm transphobic, maybe. Like Can we some just people. correct them? <laughs> <laughs> well, some you, people. You hang out with more trans people than I do. Yeah, I like going to so- hang out with Marcus. Marcus and I are going to London together. Oh, I love Marcus. I know. He's Marcus a is the offensive tranny on Instagram. Yeah, That's his handle. Guy. He's great. Uh, yeah, I, I saw like on your Instagram post like a while ago, you like took like a, a beach picture with like two trans women. And I was yeah. like, I, was yeah, like yeah. I don't think I have any pictures with two trans yeah, women, yeah. but Ariel does. John, oh my God. Jonna, by the way, when you come to Florida, you have to, you have to hang out with us. Sure. Literally one of the funniest people I've ever met. Like, just really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Like she lost her phone. Like she's a hot mess. Like a hot mess of an, of an ass of a woman. Like walking around, she sees this like this really big mansion. She goes... That's daddy's house. Like shit like that. Like, it's just, <laughs> like the epitome of like a, a wannabe wealthy woman, but in the best way possible. Like, yeah. Oh my God. That is so funny. And David, <laughs> David and I are cracking up the whole time. Do you, does it ever like, I mean, we're very, I feel like because of what we do, we have a really hard shell and we kind of like the bullets kind of bounce off and we survive and we get through it. And like, we're, we're, we're tough skinned, you know what I mean? Um, but does it ever actually get to you? It got to me only when I lost people that I thought were friends of mine. That's the only yeah. time it ever got to me. Yeah, because I know that you know the truth. So I don't care what other people think. But I thought that my friends knew the truth too. Yeah. And I still think they know the truth. I of just don't they do. think. <laughs> I just, yeah. And that's what bothers me more than anything, right? Like I have friends or ex friends of mine that believe the same thing we do, but they'll never say it. And that's the bigger problem. That is just the running theme of I filmed the, the episode problem. with Buck Angel right before you, and we were talking about that for a while. It's like, so I talk about trans issues, obviously, and my DMs are just full of famous trans people, actors, influencers, whatever have you. I agree with you, but I could never say it. I'm not surprised. And that's so frustrating. I'm not surprised. And that happens to me at Pride events, too. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. oh of course. Of course. Yeah, we go to Pride events like years ago. And I'm, I'm just, well, maybe not you, because you've always been controversial. In the best way, of course. But like years ago, I would go to Pride events or I would go to VidCon when I was invited to Playlist Live and stuff like that. They don't invite me anymore. And these young kids, like 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, would come up and hug me like, you saved my life. Thank you so much. Now it's like 28-year-old kids at Pride. Kids, people coming up to me at Pride. Like, I think you had this experience too when they're like, like standing next to you. Just so you know, I love your videos. And then they walk away. Like, but they won't even look at you. They'll just like kind of like brush up against you, so no one knows that they're talking. To Definitely you. had that happen. See, and it's been it's this bizarre thing. I've never thought I never thought that that would happen. Just I, so you know, I appreciate what you do. Yeah. And then they walk away, and I'm like, oh, hello. And they go. There was a while all the time where I was like, I would receive it, and I would be like, okay, well, this is someone that you know is saying something nice to me, and even if they can't do it in a more upfront way or or visible way, they're still giving me a compliment. Now I actually find it highly disrespectful. Yeah, because now I'm like, 
so you know that you you know that you can be the the start of the change of all of this. You could you you can be the beginning of the tidal wave, so to speak. Yeah. And you don't have the balls to do it. Yeah. That's upsetting. I find and it. And they call themselves activists. You're, that's not what activism is. No. Activism. Well, there was a quote a while ago, and I can't remember what it, what it was, but it was basically like people call themselves activists nowadays. But there's there's it's not real activism unless there's like a threat. Like a or not maybe not a threat, but like if you have a, something to lose. If you have something to lose, right? Like yeah, that's better. That's a better way of putting it, right? Because right. otherwise, you're just walking around like oh, trans lives matter, black lives, blah 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 blah. That's everyone agrees with that. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. not that's yeah. not something that's going to get you a threat of getting fired or right. One hundred percent. Like it's and that's the thing. It's like I know that I know that I know that I know that if I were to just parrot all the talking points that the community wants me to parrot. I would have been how to show on CNN. <laughs> you I get would, that I money. Would, no, really. I know. That's, I know. That's why people, I'm like, oh, you're a grifter. And I'm like, um, do you understand how much more money I would make? Yeah. If I was up here talking about, so, you know, uh, white men are evil and um, 12 year olds have to have double mastectomies because that's acceptance. And I would, it, it would be Man. a fucking cakewalk for me in life. But mm-hmm. instead it's like, you know, and I see it with you as well. It's like, you've chosen to go against the grain based on principle and integrity yeah and not enough people have integrity anymore no well that's a new yorker thing too i think but if you if the interesting thing is that people call us grifters but if you look at our content we've stayed the same on issues since day one even you and you technically had the shift where you were identifying as a liberal and then you came out as a trump supporter right but the interesting thing is like maybe you went a little harder after coming out as a trump supporter but to me, you've always had those same views. The same views. You're just willing to say it louder now. Yes. And to be more kind of blunt well, about because, it. W- which is the truth. Because now, I mean, I'd be lying if I said it's it's not easier knowing that you have a ba- like a you know backbone of, of supporters. Like, I didn't have anybody supporting me. And no matter what I said, somebody would pick at it. Somebody would find something nasty to say about me. Or just twist my words. And, you know. So now, even if I do say something wrong, instead of trying to get me fired or trying to like harass me people will just slide in my dms and be like like whoever it, it could be anybody yeah just they'll deem me oh maybe talk about it this way next time or i'll come on your sh- come on the video next time okay great that's how it should be that's how it always should have been but i can't even call them liberals because i am technically the definition of a liberal it's like libertarian like live and let live don't yeah. tell me how to live my life don't tell me what to do, government. Like, that was the old, like, 1970s hippies, right? But the rules have really changed. It's shifted. And it's like, now now it's like, tell me what to do. Daddy, yes, daddy, government. It's like, absolutely not. That's the thing for me. It's like Bizarre. the past um, two years in particular, like, I felt like have been, if I was, like, Red Bull before or if I Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Right-wing views before, 2020 and beyond is like, okay. Forget, forget it. I can't even. Yeah. I've been living in Florida for, you know, like for the past four years, like on and off. Like I go, I, I snowbird. When I go back to New York, it's really not as bad because I'm there in the summer. Mm-hmm. But when you go there in the winter, like, and they started asking me for my papers and shit, like my COVID paper, I was like, fuck you. <laughs> I just, I would leave. I'm not giving you my business. Yeah, that's why fuck I left you. LA. Yeah, fuck you. It's wild to see how, pe- like the, the, the mask Nazis, like the, half yeah. of those fucking masks, more than half the masks don't even work. Like, I I was one of those people that was like, if I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get sick. At the height of the pandemic, I went to Florida, I went to Dallas, came home with COVID, I was fine. <laughs> like, I was fine. Like, but the I idea that fine. you're not supposed to be able to make that choice for yourself right. is what's crazy. I yeah. felt like we've just made this huge But my shift. body, my choice somehow right. we is made this... true with some things on the left, but not all. Like, it doesn't... Right. There's, there's no consistency. That's another reason why people like you and I aren't on that side anymore. Well, maybe you were never on that side, but... You know, yeah, not really. Well, I guess I mean, you thought you were maybe years well, ago. Well, that's crazy. Is like I was definitely um, a lot more of a what you'd consider like a lefty when I was like a teenager. Which makes sense. That's when most people are. Right. But then I look at like people who are like that in their like 40s, 40s 50s. And like... And I'm like, what world have you been living in oh. that you've been able to completely reject and neglect like self-reliance, like fiscal responsibility, independence, like that's nuts to me i I have honestly have no idea and i I think the best way to explain it is maybe just living in these progressive cities where they where they're able to get on in these programs like we see it yeah yeah i mean you live in you live in texas but you live in austin it's you know right it's a big difference but you know i love austin because i feel as though it's kind of the best of both worlds because the right wing has a severe lack of appreciation for art 
true for um emotion for beauty in some senses mm -hmm. and culture true and so you have that with the lefties that are here but they don't have power necessarily like with the government here so it's like you get kind of like the lefties contributing in their art which they absolutely should and then but we have like freedom at the same time so it's kind of like the best of both worlds because like i frankly i don't know if i'd want to live in necessarily a red town in a red state i don't i don't think so i think too much of anything is bad you know whereas but I, I do know what it's like to live in too much of anything on the other side when i lived in la right which is like you know blue city blue state and it's hell yeah so it's also like i'm not sitting here talking about things i don't know about so all these you know angry lefties that are living in, I don't know where y'all live, Ohio, Oregon. Oklahoma, Oregon, right. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, I, I walked the walk. I lived in LA for right. years. I know what it's like to live under democratic leadership. Bad. And it's it's no good for anyone, actually. So it's just, but you like Florida. I was going to say Florida, I guess, kind of in, in a way is like Austin then. Because we have, like the leftists don't control the states or the cities, but we still have a lot of college kids and we have yeah. a lot of art and culture. Yeah. So it, and that's important. Yeah. It, to that's, me, it is. Yeah. I mean, you have, we have Disney, obviously. Well, you have Miami and you have Tampa, St. Pete, big art towns. Yeah. You have yeah. to have both. And what's so interesting to me, you talked about like the showing of the papers and it's like in LA, because it was like that for, it might even still be out. I haven't been back in a couple months, but um, the gay clubs in West Hollywood and the gay establishments were the first to implement it. And of I found that were. so interesting. Before they actually even legally had to, there was like a date that the city of LA set, and it was like I don't know what it was. It was like I don't know April twenty third. Right, right, right. You have to start showing vax papers. They did it like April fifth. They're like we're just gonna do it early. I'm like, isn't it so funny? Not in a truly comical way, but in an ironic, right, sick, twisted way that the people that were so bullied and persecuted and excluded from by society the government. by the government <laughs> are so willing to do that to someone yeah. else. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised because this is where it, like. We were talking about this two seconds ago. How do people in their 40s and 30s, how do they not see this at this point? Like, how do they sit there and say, this all makes sense? I don't know. None of it, like, it flipped on its head, which is why so many people that were, I mean, I thought I was Democrat. I get, and I got, for, the, for a lot of the time I was. Like, New York yeah. Democrats used to be sane people, you know? Now they're not, but they were for, generally speaking, they were for, um, not like they were for higher taxes, but free because speech. right, they were for free, right libertarianism, like free speech, my body, my choice, which I am pro-choice. Um, and they were more for like city integrated programs, which I am for because I grew up in a poor. Uh, I I wasn't poor, I was middle class, but most of the people I grew up with were like lower middle class, like myself. Like we needed those programs, right? You know, like all all those are like my my my. A college portfolio to get into art school was literally pencil drawing, colored pencil drawings. Like we didn't have that kind of expensive, mm. you know, we didn't have anything in school. We had a, we had to sell chocolate to pay for our buses and wow. our and our and our and our uh, softball uniforms and stuff like that. And we didn't even get to keep the uniforms. Like it, wow. it, this is New York City, yeah. Like we now the Democrats and the progressives. I don't even know what the hell they're doing. Like I, I mean, the schools. I haven't been in school in years, but. It was a very different. It made sense to be a Democrat then. Now it doesn't, in my opinion. And I think it flipped head. It flipped on its head, and it's bizarre. Be it's bizarre to me because the people that are are Democrats now wouldn't have been Republicans back then. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that. Sh I think they're just maybe those people are the ones that are afraid to to or at least afraid to admit. That I think that there's a, a lag taking place in the sense of like, I feel like a lot of people are caught up on these labels and what they meant like in 2004. Right, I agree. The same way that people say, um, oh, the, the right wing hates gay people. How could you ever tolerate being around them? And trans people especially. It's different for trans, but let's right. just, for gay. Right. Um, there's a lot of gay Republicans. And people will get mad at it and people act yeah. like it's some sort of, you know, grand hypocrisy. But at the end of the day, log cabin Republicans have been around for a while. That's a really old um, gay yeah. group, gay Republican group. Um, so to pretend as if they're not a part of the party is like bizarre. And there still are you know, older conservatives who definitely have that, like, still want to maybe think of marriage as one between men, men and women. Too bad, too sad, kind of, you know, it's already here. Yeah, it's already here, here right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Trump said that. Right. He was like, it's already here, I'm not going to touch it. Right. Basically. Cause, right, because, I mean, he also grew up in New York. It's like he was around He doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Doesn't care. And really, no one does. I mean, it's hard to find two people to even talk about that issue anymore and right. really debate that, you know? It's like, people on Twitter maybe, but whatever. Do you get a lot of flack from the right for being pro-choice? I don't talk about it much, but I also, 
I'm not like, let's kill babies. Like, you know, it's not like that's not. Someone's going to clip that. Get, let, get, ahead. <laughs> get ahead. Let them do it. That's going to be the promo for this. Yeah. <laughs> let's kill babies. Look, because like, you know, the shouting your abortion yeah. thing, like, I don't, I'm not pro that. That's demented. Yeah. Like, that's not healthy. That's not normal behavior. That's, that's, yeah. But like, pro choice as far as like, in certain cases, in certain instances, it does make sense, in my opinion. Is it, is it, is it good? No, but is it, it, it should it be allowed? In some cases, yes. I don't yeah. think it's ever good, but I think sometimes you have to. It can sometimes be a necessary evil. Yeah. Yes, a necessary evil. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. I, th I yeah. think it's that's the the crazy part is like humans are so extreme on each yeah. end where it becomes like these people on the left that are suddenly like like you said shouting your abortion or like being proud baking of cakes. it and baking cakes. You saw that right. on TikTok. Even if it's something that you, yeah. oh even if God. it's something that you feel like you have to do, I've never understood. And I go back and forth on my position on it to be honest because literally i'll go like a six month stretch where i'm like all abortion is murder then the six month stretch where i'm like well if it's a month in it's, eh. i go back and forth i'm, I'm not it's tricky i'm it's, not it's solid not an on easy it. subject yeah. yeah but what i what i always have been consistent <laughs> it's about on, empathy right yes sometimes you want to have sometimes the situation calls for more empathy for the baby and sometimes, sometimes the situation for the, for the woman yeah and that's really what it comes down to if you really think about it yeah the one thing i i definitely though have really been consistent on is like these people that are proud of it are fucking crazy. No, that's not. It's it's that's even, not that's not a normal feminism no. thing. No. Even if it's no. something that you had to do and you saw and it was a necessary evil and whatever, to be proud of it is weird. Not everything you have to be proud about. Right. Right. Um I want to get your thoughts on Florida and like that's like the fucking mm. all the gay stuff happening, the don't say gay bill, which is not the don't say gay bill. The Disney um, stuff. Yeah, you've been super vocal <laughs> about that. So can yeah, you yeah. can you break it down for people? Let's break it down. So I have a friend, uh, my friend Brooke. She she has a she does so she's an operative. I think I think it's called. So she basically helps politicians run their campaigns to get elected. I, oh, I believe. Sound like a spy or something. I'm I like, know an op a secret op. <laughs> <Russia>. <laughs> it does sound like that. Is she from Russia. Who knows? She or... might do it. She, she's dating a Russian girl though. She is dating a Russian, That's so there might suspect. be something there. <laughs> a little sus. But no, but she she helped Trump on his campaign and she helped DeSantis. Um, and when the "Don't Say Gay" bill came out, and everyone was tweeting me. Oh, I told you right wing people hate you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Yeah, I got that too. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, like maybe they do. Let's see. Cause I'm not going to, you know. So I, I my, actually, I don't remember if I texted her. I think she texted me and she was like, Have you seen this? And I'm like, Yeah, I haven't read it yet. Like, let me read it. I was like, I saw the article, whatever. I started reading it and I'm like, Okay. I, I didn't feel like reading the whole bill because it's like 15, 16 pages or whatever it was. And I was like, Just tell me what it is. She's like, It's fine. This is what it means. You're just not allowed to talk about like sexual orientation, not romantic orientation. So, which is that's a very important, very distinction. important point because people are like, oh, I can't even say that you have a, a husband or two moms. That's not sexual orientation. That's romantic orientation, right? That's like a family. When, mm. when you talk about sexual orientation, you're talking about sexual attraction. See, I, even with I third didn't, graders, right? I, even I, and I want to let you continue to break that down because it's yeah, so yeah. important. But even I didn't know the that difference? there was a distinction. That you could say something as as benign as like, yes, you know, I'm married to a man or whatever. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, which, the lost, which yeah. I don't even know why that. that will come up, but if it did come up, like you can, okay, then good. Yeah, yeah, like maybe, well, may, I mean, if it comes up, maybe like you know, p teachers have maybe pictures of on their desk of their kids with their husband, yeah. like, like stuff like that. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's my husband. Oh, okay, the kids or a don't school care. School event or something, right? Yeah. Something like okay, no problem. Like I had, like we were talking about outside. I had a gay teacher in school. Mr. Sutera, who's my math teacher in, I think, freshman year of, of high school. He was flamboyant as hell. Everybody knew he was gay. Nobody cared, by the way. And this was back in 2004. Nobody cared. And it wasn't like he didn't make it a thing. We didn't talk about it. We, I, I don't even think he, I mean, he probably could have if he really wanted to. I just right. been like, oh, yeah, that's my husband. or That's my boyfriend or whatever. Now we have all these teachers on TikTok coming out to their students as non-binary. <laughs> And all these things, and like, like coming out as non-binary and, 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 and convincing the kids they're non-binary. Yes, yeah. Like there, there's the teacher coming out as mixed, blah blah blah, whatever the hell. And in the background, you hear a kid. Oh, does that mean you're like not a boy but not a girl? Oh, that's me. I don't want to be a boy. I'm, I don't want to. I, I want to be a boy. I don't want to be a girl. And the, and then the teacher's like, yeah, you could be whatever you want. It's like that's not what being trans. That's not what trans is. It's not gay. Like these. It's just. It's insane indoctrination, and that's what, in my opinion, that's what the don't say gay bill is about. It's about keeping these conversations that are going to confuse kids like you and i we knew that we were different we didn't need yeah. a teacher to tell us that you just know these things yeah don't ask me how we know but yeah. you knew yeah. you knew there was something wrong 
mm -hmm. of something off if that's i don't know if that's the right word 100 percent. yeah i don't know if there's something wrong with being gay but there's something different about it yeah you, you, i think that um obviously every person's experience under the lgbt umbrella is going to be individual specific and unique however i think there is a uniform experience of like when we're young we kind of recognize that we're not necessarily like the other kids yep and you can place a value judgment on that. You can say it's good or bad, but we we just notice like, oh, there's them, and then there's me. Yeah, and you which know? is another reason why I think it's okay. I think the don't say gay bill is is more than okay the way it's written, because you are allowed to, like I said, you are allowed to discuss romantic orientation. Like when I was nine, I knew that I was gay, but that doesn't mean that it was a sexual identity. I didn't even know what sex was when I was nine. That's true, and that's right? hard to put into words for people that are not. But you, I'm gay sure you or understand trans. too, right? Yeah, especially because being trans isn't a sexual orientation. So right. for me, it was a little more cut and dry um, in the sense of like, I'm different. But it, and it, I know in your I, head, it started being romantic, right? Because yeah. you started seeing yourself as a woman with a man yes. in a romantic way. So it does kind of still veer yeah. in that direction. Right. So, and you're allowed to discuss that kind of stuff. You're just not allowed to talk about sex. Like you shouldn't be allowed to talk about sex with 78 year olds, nine year olds. Isn't it amazing that half the country, maybe even more, is upset that you cannot talk about sex to kindergarten through third graders. I, that's the hill they're willing that, to die on. Do you think on. that's true, or do you think they just misread the bill, or just didn't read the bill? They didn't read it. I think they just, I, I hope so. I don't think there's that many pedophiles in this country. I really hope Well, not. I have said this before, yeah. that becoming an adult is to understand how many people are cokeheads, follow me, how many people are <laughs> cokeheads and pedophiles. Okay. There's so many more than you would think. Really? So, so many more people do coke than you expect. And so many more people are fucking pedophiles. Like I, <laughs> I feel like it's like you look at what's happening. I don't know with, that. It's like you look no. at what's happening with all these teachers, and I'm like, you see these like videos of these teachers being super creepy with the kids and talking about and getting gender euphoria when the kid does whatever the hell. Yeah, like, it's, it's like, like, oh, you're a narcissist, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like, I'm not gonna sit here and say they're all pedophiles. I'm not gonna sit no. here and say they're, but like, I think some of them are. Probably. You can't. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to place that on, through a camera and just make that call, so you don't. Right. But right. 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 No, they, I, I think you're right. I think I. I think. I think since since leaving the like when I you know left the left, yeah. but like since since I left that pile of craziness behind, I think I started seeing things more for what they were. It's it's easier to see things for what they are. Does that make sense? It's easier to see things for what they are, or like the for what they are, like. Where before I would make excuses, maybe, I guess, for these people. Where I'd yeah, be like, I oh, maybe, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe they're not pedophiles. Maybe they're just really trying to, like, help these kids. It's like, no, they're, that's creepy. Like, now I'm just, like, at the hard line for me now at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it got to it got to a point where I'm just like, no, this doesn't make sense anymore. And it's safer before, to draw that line. Because if the yeah. worst thing that happens is you're being too protective, I'd rather be too protective or too... Yes. and then get hate for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then you know, situations slipping through the cracks and, like... I'm sorry, there's something really disgusting about the amount of teachers. And one thing I do struggle with, though, I will say, is differentiating between internet and real life in the sense of, like, just because yeah. I'm seeing all these videos does not mean this is what's happening in real life. But then I remember these are real people in real classrooms, and then some of these classrooms have 30 kids. So if I see even, like, 100 of these teachers, which I've seen more, multiply that by 30 each, this is like a shitload of, thousands kids, of kids being indoctrinated. Yeah, Hundreds yeah, of yeah. thousands of kids. Yeah. And then you think of all the teachers that don't post, post the, the shit right so you know it's it's very clear to me that the don't say gay law in florida is something that should probably be implemented in every state because there, there's no logical reason why you should be talking about it with a k through third grader there really isn't no because i don't think that you can convince a kid they are gay or trans and I think that's that, my point. I think that we is, knew we knew yes. it instinctively. You just know that you're different. And this you is need where, time to like you need time to fully understand it. Yeah. But we know if you have to teach somebody that they're gay or trans they're not gay or trans. Yeah, I think this is where conservatives get it wrong, though. They claim that these teachers are going to, you know, like, oh, they're going to turn the kids gay or trans or whatever. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's possible. But you can absolutely confuse a kid absolutely. about if absolutely. they're gay or trans. And which is what's happening 100 which is why which is why the numbers are skyrocketing right now everybody like there's no lesbians anymore everybody's non-binary and queer yeah the concept of but somehow none of those non-binary queer people ever like actually date women right <laughs> like all the women that all the non-binary people that are 
remind me to oh, have yeah. you tell me about like dating apps with like all the trans shit because i know like especially if you're oh, like in the God. lesbian dating app is probably crazy let's it's just bad. talk about it now what's up with that because you, you've sent me like screenshots I, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes. of like you know like, i know you won't judge and I, well you yeah, will yeah. i mean because you will judge. no i'll judge them them not, me, <laughs> not right? you not me. um but you've shown me screenshots that i sit there and i'm like this with my phone <laughs> Like it's a gag because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a trans woman on a lesbian dating app. Yeah. And we're not talking like, oh, they just look a little rough. We're not talking like, oh, they're clearly on a journey. We're talking right. like they look like not Joey. Not trying. Not trying. We're talking Joey with a literally with a she her on. Literally. Yeah. L like people going to think we're making this up. Literally, that's what it is. I mean, keep in mind, this is most of the time in like New York and like Florida that I'll be searching. So like more like liberal cities yeah. like Orlando, Miami. Well, Miami's not liberal anymore. That's what? part of the problem, though, right? Because <clears throat> I've, I've noticed, like, this is all, these conversations are so hung up on, like, geography as well, in the sense of, like, if you're from, like, Nebraska. Oh, you're not going to find that. That's not happening. You're not going to find that, first no. of all. And second of all, you're going to think that we're crazy for thinking it's a problem or we're overblowing it. And it's like, no, no. Go to New York and you'll see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So change your, pay the subscription for Bumble. Make it a little bit, pay a little bit more money. So you can change your location and then you'll see these crazies. Right. And that goes with all this stuff is it starts in the cities and it makes its way yep. to the Midwest yep, and to yep, these yep, small yep. towns. Yep. Like the, the, that's the warning. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But how does that like, obviously you're not hitting these people up. They're probably not hitting you up because they're probably like, oh, that's that bitch from YouTube. That's not true. They do. Oh, they God, do. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm how not do that react? popular anymore, I guess. <laughs> I mean, they have, they, it's not like they'll message me, but because they, you know, you have to. <laughs> Girl, I'm COVID. Sorry. You're no, you're okay. Drink I'm some COVID. Water. Drink Just more. kidding. I don't care. Drink, <laughs> I don't drink more. Good. I'm good. No, but they have. There have been points where, like, a lot of like that's how I find a lot of them is they'll like me. Oh, they'll God. like just hard or whatever but you know how like people are lazy they, they it's not like they look to see if i'm a lesbian they just see a hot girl or whatever and they swipe you know what i mean like one of those which is also honestly <laughs> very typical male behavior um yeah because you and i like we're sitting there and we're like okay what is this person actually about let me scroll oh they're lesbian <laughs> oh well maybe oh. yeah that's well, a dude that just swipes mm -hmm. i don't know any i don't know I don't, I, and let's be real a lot of these people i mean even if they were like fully transitioned what you have to remember is like you're still socialized as a male for half your life yes so that is very much male behavior and and people don't like to talk about that well, people I'm think talk about it right now let's We're fucking go in Pe <laughs> people people I got think good that you take a hormone don't forget people think you take a hormone pill and suddenly like you and i have the exact same brain makeup and it's like not really true you know what i mean there's right. there's a gradient here of course you know and it's like it's the same with trans men you know we're talking about this with buck angel that they're socialized as women. So you see the trans conversation is so much dominated by trans women, right? The trans men kind of fall to the wayside. They're socialized as girls and they they're tend to fall back yeah. in the conversation and get yes. dominated. Yep. It yeah, is what no, it is. It, it's the truth. What were you going to say though? Because you're going to say something. Oh, I got, I got the tea. So spill it. An, an ex friend of mine, and at this point, I, I, I spill it all. I won't say the name, but an ex older trans friend of mine used to work in a nightclub. She was a, uh, one of the photographers. And she used to, uh, we, I used to hang out at the, uh, it, like the burlesque show, whatever, I used to go back in the VIP room because I didn't want to deal with people. And I have anxiety. I just don't want to deal with people. I would just hang out with my friends in the back because, like, I barely got to see them. So the girl, the trans woman would come back and she would be like, oh, uh, I was taking some, you know, pictures of people and they gave me some tips and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, this one girl was hitting on me. And I'm like, oh, what did she say? Oh, she just, like, said that I, she said thank you and she was really nice to me. So she was hitting on me. And I'm like, that's like the most dude thing that I've ever heard in my life. Dude thing. It really like she was nice to me, so she must like me. Is it dude? Is it dude? That's I'm so sorry. Dude. That's very. Dude. It's a dude thing. Yeah. Like it's, never. It's it, dude. One hundred percent. Like she would, and she would say things like that, and I, I would, she, if I ever said that to her face, she would probably literally, God forbid, kill herself. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, not like for real. <laughs> <clears throat> but. Like, we, we have this joke as lesbians. It's like, a girl can literally be going down on you. And you're like, do you like me? Like, I know it sounds stupid, but it's fucking true. And it's like, we're like neurotic with it, women, right? Like, we always are thinking that we have to do more. We have to prove ourselves more. Men are just like, well, let's get, come get. Like, not all men, of course, not hashtag, not all men, of course, right? But there's typical behaviors seen typical in the Typical behaviors, right. That's all I'm trying to say. There's typical behaviors from the way, you know, society kind of molds you a little bit yeah and and there were certain things that that she would do and she would you were only you know 
uh, like raised what 20 years or whatever it was she was in her late late early 40s when she started oh yeah of course yeah that's yeah. All, that's a grown-ass man that yeah <laughs> so it's like okay you lived your whole life basically yeah yeah i mean that just is what it is it's going to be certain traits that you know i'm trans because in many ways my brain operates in a parallel way with you right. however that doesn't erase the fact that i was a little boy that doesn't erase the fact that i was socialized accordingly and there's going to be certain traits that maybe they'll you know soften through transitioning but they're still going to be there you know i'm mm -hmm. still in many ways like a very like kind of dominated person in my relationship dynamics with every relationship i've ever been in i'm the leader in the relationship and like that's not a typical obviously some women are we're speaking mm -hmm. in we're speaking in in um broad strokes yes yes but but that's not necessarily typical right, so right. everyone's different but you know that you that is like really gross i i will say one good point that she made was and i don't know if you agree with this or not i i think i tend to agree with it because i understand i understood where she was coming from when she really when she changed the wording to be lesbian and not trans woman <laughs> but one of the things that she, she would say was well i wasn't raised as a boy i was raised as a trans woman but presenting as a boy and I kind of understand that because te technically, let me try to explain. Yeah. When, she, when she changed the wording to me, I was like, okay, now I kind of understand. Because you could say that about me before I came out. Oh, well, you were raised in a straight world. Like you were, you thought you were, you were seen as the world is straight. But in my head, I wasn't, right? So I lived as a straight woman for 19 years. But did I really? Like there, there's, there is some gray area there you There's know what some i'm saying truth to that you know what i'm saying like I, yeah. I i understood where she was coming from with that it's a little different with being trans but i, I see you what so? you're saying like i see what you're saying because i was always a lesbian i was just perceived as being straight yeah like you were always but i guess that you know that's the saying? question like i go back and forth on like was i always trans like i don't i i, I don't know I, I always have gender dysphoria right that's what that's what's the, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's what i mean right? yeah i don't know there's there's such a sensitive and like really like hot button conversation with trans women and, and women and women's spaces. And it's like the war is like never been more fucking intense than it is like right now with JK Rowling and, and oh TERFs and so-called TERFs. And, and, and it's so like strange because like I said before, there's like the internet and then there's real life. It's like, right. it's weird because these conversations don't come up in, in real, real life. life. But then I, I get invested in them because it's like, yeah, that's true. Or, oh, that's not true. Oh, that's bad. Or, that's good. But it's like, so how do you, because you've been online for how many years doing what you do? 12. Right. So how do you separate that? Like, do you kind of see what I'm saying with like real life and the internet wars? I think, yes, I think you're right. But I think it is starting to happen more and more in real life. Yeah. Because like, it's we spilling were just, over for sure. Yeah. Like two years ago, they didn't want to let me into the country of Australia. <laughs> Oh like, yeah, because they your to, views. They're trying to keep, literally keep me out of Australia. Well, they stay locking people out of Australia. They're horrible <laughs> over there. I should never went. No, I almost, I almost got locked in there because of COVID. Like right as I left the day, you would have been there until like last week. Literally, That's right after. Yeah, literally, yeah. But like right after the day after I left, it was like March third or something. That's when they closed all the flights. Oh my Wild. god. Wild. Yeah. Buck was there too. He left maybe. A day or two around around us asking me we were there for oh morning. God, girl. imagine both of you would have just been be stuck on, there. We'd be Australia for two Holy years. Holy shit! Yeah, Sydney, Sydney Watson. Yeah, I know. she she went through it because her whole, whole family is from there. Australia yeah. and like the the shit that's gone on there is crazy. But yeah, I think the um, it's happening more in real life and and a lot of the things that people said weren't going to happen. Like maybe there'll be one person that takes advantage of of you know trans ideology to harm women. It's like okay, now we're looking at like a news story every week. And it's so literally just last week in New Jersey. Yeah, I just posted about it on yeah. my channel. A trans woman yeah, got, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, trans woman got two women pregnant and then killed one of them. What the fuck is going on? I mean, that's not Wait, my. She, she killed one of the women. She got pregnant. I didn't know that. Suppose. I mean, that's what I read. Who knows if that's oh true? My God. That's what the, that's what Washington Post wow. and that was Washington Post that posted the article. While pregnant. I guess so. So maybe she killed three people and two people. Yeah, wild. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is And she was insane. in jail. She was, I don't want to say, she, well, I don't know if she was an actual trans person. The person, the supposed trans person was in jail. If you're for, raping women, you're a he. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean. I'm sorry. If you're raping women, you're a he. I don't care. I don't think rapists need to have their fucking pronouns respected. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, But this. And anyone who gets mad, you're getting mad over me disrespecting rapists. So I, don't I know. Really yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. That's the crazy part, right? I know. I know. It's like, I remember during like the whole Jessica and Eve saga, it's like, whenever people get mad at me for it, I'm like, you're mad that I'm being rude to a pedophile to a pedophile yeah literally 
we have to talk also about pedophiles latching onto the community. Oh, let's go. What are we going to talk about? I'm, you know, I'm down for anything. Yeah, it's more and more scary, right? It's, it's not scary. I, I saw it coming. Like we saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not like we've been talking about this shit for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Like and then people come it. around. And they're like, oh my god, yeah, they're now right. they're all of a sudden. Oh my god, that's this is happening. It's like yeah. we knew this was going to happen. When, like that's why we've been warning people. Yeah, go back to 20. 15 bitch. I made a video, but yeah. yeah. Literally, yeah. I think that was your first video about It was masks. one of my first one. Out. Yeah, and, yeah. and people were like, you're overblowing this. This is one or two people. And I'm like, okay. Because the minute you give something a community and a title and a fucking flag, we're talking about mm -hmm. maps, which is minor attracted people, people who yes. don't know. You should know. Um, and, you know, they're using the same playbook as our community as we did to gain acceptance. And yeah. and it's it's not... It's not that it's working so well because a lot of people rightfully so are against pedophiles, but it's um, not not working. I mean, it's it's definitely helping them gain whatever traction they will gain. Yeah. Until it's like, you know, until it gets to it gets, you know, until it crosses whatever line they're going to. I mean, they've crossed the line. <laughs> they've crossed 100 lines at this yeah. point. But it's a long I guess game. I, I guess until they break the law, maybe is what's what's going to wind up actually stopping them from doing anything. But do you know there's a pedophile village in St. Pete? Did you know that in Florida? There's like a like a village where these pedophiles live. What? Where is this, Georgia? Like two out in St. Pete, Florida. Oh, in Florida. In Florida. Well, is it like <clears throat> convicted or is it like what I is don't it? know actually. That's well, convicted crazy. would be a child molester, not a pedophile. I don't know. Okay. It could be either. I really don't know. Maybe both. What do they do there? They just live there, <laughs> like to stay away from. They have to be away from like a hundred miles or whatever from kids oh so it's so more it's like, of like a oh so they probably are then maybe, convicted maybe yeah they have to like keep them away or whatever. yeah because until in Florida, you've actually done I mean, something not a bad place to be honestly to live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> they got a maid gun imagine someone's like, just shit. learning that they're from there and they're just learning it as it's there and they're like oh i gotta yeah, move yeah that's crazy yeah it's what's well, it, yeah i'm pretty sure it's in st pete it's like really close to it well what's really interesting is like i've sort of watched and so have you like the trajectory that the map People have been. I hate that I even call them out. We can't call them out. They're fucking pedophiles. <laughs> I hate. The, see how it works? Yeah. <laughs> see how it, they trick people I know. who are against them into using their language. Yeah. I just made that connection that we're using that fucking language. Yeah. Um. But I've seen the trajectory that they've gone on to get where they are now, which is now you're seeing it taught in college classes. Not taught in the sense that this is a good thing, but you're seeing it like there was like a community of people. And oh yeah. So once they've established their community, it was at NYU that that talk. Yeah. It was in New York and at NYU. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So to me, it, it seems as though it's like a long game for them. Like they're oh, they're chipping away slowly. Little tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Little yeah. tiny bit. Let's let's. That, that's rebranding. Yeah. It's literally what it is. It's what I studied in college. <laughs> yeah. Studied advertising and branding. <laughs> There's a whole fucking major for that. Yeah, shit. literally. That's what uh, they're doing. Yeah. Let's rebrand. Let's rename it, which is what conservatives need to do, honestly, because it's a terrible name. Conservative just sounds scary, but. Let's re let's rebrand pedophile yes. and call it maps. Yeah. Let's yeah. get our get our flag, say that we're, you know, that we might we might not always offend, which obviously if they're not offending anybody, fine. And if if, if calling somebody if, if somebody if calling somebody a map instead of a pedophile actually help them not offend, I'd be down to do that, but there's no proof. In fact, and, it's and just I think what they're saying. I think you've argued against that, right? You you think it that being more lenient might actually convince them to be more to be more likely to offend. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, to be less of a stigma, right? To create yeah. less of a stigma around it. And I'm not an, an expert. <laughs> There's no way to know yet, but yeah, I'm not an expert on this shit. I know there's people that study this shit. However, I do consider myself an observer of culture. I've considered mm -hmm. myself someone who studied the trajectory of the LGBT community, yeah. other communities that have um, come up. Yeah, and they're literally following it play, like play by play. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, you know, maybe it wasn't a perfect scenario before that where society was just like, no, stomp it down. Don't talk about it, whatever. Yeah. Because there's problems with that, too. But it was certainly better than them having a fucking flag. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> it's only go. there's only two directions you can go. It's either less kids getting harmed or more. And I feel like this is going towards the more. I think, you. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. But then can we also talk about how, like, people are going to get so mad at this. Among Say other it. things we're talking about, Say it. why does defending pedophilia, even though it's not common, always fall on the left when it does come out? It's always it's always on the left. Because I think they are, you, and I heard you talking about this in, with your episode with Buck. I think they're obsessed with housing, pun not intended, housing minorities, like wanting to keep minorities safe, even if those minorities are 
infringing upon somebody else's rights and human yeah. body autonomy. Like, that's why everybody's non-binary these days. Everybody's some kind of gender fluid, gender queer, whatever. Fucking baby gender, <laughs> like, toe gender. There all are these people different... who do identify as babies. That's literally, so sad literally, that people, literally. You say these things and people are, like, thinking it's a joke and it's like... No, it's literally going TikTok. It's there. literally, There's, like, what's happening? Thing. There are, like, grown-ass people wearing diapers. Yes, literally. I mean, to each their own, if that's the case, you're not hurting anybody. I'm a libertarian in that sense. Like, do whatever the hell you want to do. It doesn't, like, doesn't hurt somebody. I don't but when it comes, it. Yeah, exactly. I'm I don't like, whatever. I'll just bitch. block the hashtag onto TikTok. But, like, this is potentially going to hurt people. And that's where you people like you and I embark and, like, and you know, all these other YouTubers that are standing up to this this type of, honestly, propaganda. That Because it, it is. They're using, like you said, they're, what are they, what you said, they're, they're making us use their own language. They're changing yeah. language. <laughs> like, I'm... They're changing language, I, making it not seem as bad. That's that's a way, of, that's a form of propaganda. Yeah, I can't believe that I fell into just using the term map and I just made yeah. the connection. Like, I'm literally following what they want me to do. Yeah. They want me to say that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How have you, I always ask YouTubers this, um, but I don't think I've actually asked you this. Um, how have you stayed sane? <laughs> because this space that we're in is so toxic in so many toxic. ways. And we're blessed. We live beautiful lives because of what we've chosen to do. And yeah, yeah. a lot of people support us. And you never want to ignore that. Oh, but... I, have, I have a lot of very, I have a lot of good supporters. Yes. Like for years, like people that have been supporting me for years. And that's yeah. friends, like actual friends. And that's like fan. I don't, I hate that word. Fans. I'm not like yeah. a musician. I say supporters. Supporters. Like, yeah. yeah. Like legitimate, they are like legitimate supporters. Like, there's one. There's a few women that I talk to about my dating life, and I trust them, and they've been viewers of mine. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And like we met up and hung out recently, um, like far and few in between, maybe like five of them all together. But yeah. like, there are people. You that, can't open that door completely. But those, th but they, peop these people, I know genuinely actually care about me. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful thing that we're very lucky to have people like that. How do I stay sane though? <laughs> Honestly, I, I text you. <laughs> I text Sydney. <laughs> I call you guys. Honestly, like when I feel like I'm going crazy or something doesn't make sense, I'm like, is it me? Because sometimes it is me. Maybe like maybe I'm wrong with certain things. And I have been wrong. Like I thought Trump was terrible. It turns out he's I thought he was a really good candidate. I thought he was a really good president. Um, but, I, you know, and then and then knowing that you guys can come to me is helping keep me sane as well, because yeah. I know I'm a good friend and. Because like, we've both been yeah, there. We've in, both been in there certain, with the canceling bullshit. And, and you get in a dark spot sometimes. And sometimes it's not even because some like crazy event is happening. Sometimes it's just because you get so overwhelmed with just the life and the people involved. Like I even like, you know, not even just like dealing with hate or audience or in, in, in the work, but also dealing with like this. I had to learn this kind of the hard way. Um, even just other people who do what we do, I've become so guarded as opposed like as opposed to being open to letting people in and become my friends i have so few friends um because a lot of people who do what we do have motives issues or like motives right, right, of course and 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 sometimes you know I, I fell into doing this I, a lot of people set out and they're like i'm going to be a youtuber i'm going to be a political commentator i'm going to be an influencer and that's their goal and they do it i fell into it i never in a million years would imagine this would be my life right right um but there's a lot of people that come into it and like they're Kind of like, I'm not a, a spiritual person necessarily. You're much more than me, but like have dark energy. And talk to, I, I, you're spot on, but yeah. you but you, you don't have to be spiritual to know that. Like yeah. you feel it. It's a feeling. You could feel it right away. And I would say, it's good, people going to give me shit for saying this. A lot of people that I used to hang out with, not even going to exaggerate. Not, I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm not going to sugarcoat it rather legitimately think that that a lot of youtubers are uh, act like actually narcissistic or sociopathic oh of course like a lot of them i thought you were gonna say something way crazier than that that's but, a given well because a lot of the interesting thing is <laughs> if you look at it like it at, if you look at just somebody on camera like you me like people that are like hated online we're actually the good guys <laughs> i feel like and then you meet these people i, I don't want to say i don't want to say names <laughs> But you meet people. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to. I, I mean. I mean, we could, but we don't have to. I'll tell you after. Okay. But I see you. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. People that I used to hang out with, or people that I dated. There you go. People know who I'm talking about now. Ooh. Years ago. Uh, le legitimately, I think, are, are actually mentally ill. Like, like actually sociopathic. A YouTuber? Yeah. Yeah. You probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah. I thought we talked about this, like, years ago, I think. But... 
haven't eaten today. I'm just like lost. Are you okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't remember, but I, you can tell me after. I'll tell you after. But I... Oh, wait. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's multiple people that have said mm-hmm. this about this person. Uh, and I'm not surprised because I, t- I tended to attract those people just like you. Like you want to open your arms to everybody and then all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to protect everybody and they want to. about they yourself. Want. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. And J- Jacqueline's experience the same shit. That's why we get along. That's why, like, Jacqueline and I get along so well. I love Jacqueline. I know. Me too. <laughs> She's such a good person. I was just there. Yeah, I was there like when I went to see Candace. I told you. Yeah. I you know what's her. great about her? I don't want you to lose your thought. No, but like, Jacqueline. This is now a, a Jacqueline appreciation video. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that Jacqueline is the truest definition of like can be friends with people with different political persuasions, right? Yes. Like, she we have been in her house at the same time and we've gone on our little political rants because we see much more eye to eye than she does obviously right. she's you know much further on the left than us and like it's nothing to her no she doesn't care no because she because that's the that's the difference because she knows the truth like i said she can see past the camera yeah she sees, like she sits there she's sitting sitting in front of us and she, this is a good person she knows that we're good people yeah and i know in my heart that you know because I'm such a loudmouth bitch on the internet. I'd be tweeting shit, I'd be <laughs> posting shit, going on rants. And I know in my heart that I'm sure she sometimes looks at the, looks at the phone and, and rolls her eyes. At least internally, it's <laughs> like, oh my God, Blair. <laughs> but you know what? But she like, would that's never... like a sister thing, too, right? Yeah. It is. It's but, like, oh, you're annoying me. Like, but she would never try to call me on it. She no. would never make a video. She would never disavow. But that's like the thing about a lot of people in the space is like they will throw you under the bus for a click in a fucking heart. But that's that's manipulation and yeah. that's abuse. It is abuse. It's literal abuse. I'm gonna use you for what I can. When you're when you have friends with different opinions or different not even different values, I would call it. I think all of our values are kind of the same. We just how to how to go about it is different. Mm-hmm. When you have friends, when you have people in your life that are like that, and you purposefully will use that against them, that's 100. percent Oh, yeah. abusive abusive tactic yeah and youtubers like going with what you're saying about like being narcissists like that's absolutely true and i think even to an extent like you and i probably have a touch of that in us i think that you know i'm definitely not saying you're a full-blown narcissist or anything like that but i think that there could be a drop in both of us because just the fact that we that even, we think that we're our, our opinions are yeah they do really <laughs> right that's why Fair. I have like in my bio, I have like professional mouth runner in my bio because yeah, I'm like, yeah. I know I'm just running my fucking mouth. I know I have I'm queen in my bio. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are. Fu- I have that bitch in my bio. We are fucking narcissists. OK, um, but, but the but, good kind, not the bad kind. <laughs> what, what's the phrase? Um, there's like a good. I don't know what the phrase is. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, absolutely. And what you said earlier about how the people who are most hated online typically are like the good guys in real life. It's true. You know, I'm not even talking about myself in this. I'm saying because we'll have good and Jacqueline evil Jacqueline Glenn's us. hated too. People 100%. Jacqueline, but Frank, right. right? People yeah. hate Jacqueline. Yeah. But then <clears throat> I know this from living in LA for so many years. You know, many people don't really know how LA works. It's like when you're in LA for five years, you meet everyone. Yeah. You know, you, you've been at a party with everyone. You've had a conversation with most of them and you are friends with some of them. Right. I have been around everyone. And I know for a fact that the more hated, it's, it's almost like a fucking equation. The more hated you are online, the nicer person you are in real life. Bizarre. Yeah. It's bizarre. With some exceptions, there are people who maybe are like the Onisians of the world. It's like you're just well, a yeah. sexual predator that's different. Right, right, right. Um, some people deserve to be hated. But right. the people who are so hated tend to be so much nicer in person. True. And then the people that have these like picture perfect, no scandals, never been canceled, Never fucking have dirty, dirty, right. dirty behind Those the scenes. Those are the most evil, demonic. <clears throat> I don't even really believe in demons. It's true, but demonic, dark sided. It's true. It's crazy. It's not surprising though. Well, for us because we're in this, mm-hmm. it's not surprising to me because I've I once I I said once it's I surprising to them though. That's true. That is is it is going to be surprising to them. Once you go, like you said, once you start going to these parties, like I I started going to L.A. I think for the first time in 2013. I started going to these events. I didn't live there like you did. And I, I saw it right away. Yeah. Oh, I'm a New Yorker. I could see through mm-hmm. fake bullshit immediately. Apparently not with people I was dating, but with everybody else. Yes. <laughs> Love is blind. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. But it's, it, but it's true. And you know what it is? Because they have to lie to be that loved. In my opinion. That's true. You have to really ride the wave of whatever is socially acceptable, popular, and the right thing to say. It doesn't last forever. You think of people like, I don't know, like H3, H3. It's like... He gets by Ugh. because he says all the right things. And then, like, last week, now he got canceled for being yep. homophobic. That's what happens to all of them because everything changes and you can't keep it up. But, yep. for, but for the most part, yeah, you know, like, these people, like, 
people think that we like purposely say things that are controversial or whatever. And it's like, actually, I'm just saying what I think. And that's the difference between me and like a lot of other YouTubers. Right. I'm not saying I'm some fucking <clears throat> saint. We all have good and evil in us. But I just found it to be very tried and true that all the hated it's, people, it's you know, who's, like, true. who actually found this to be true with. And people are not going to believe Katie Hopkins. That she's the hated, the hated. She's so hated. Is like she? she is like beyond hated. Yeah. Like she's hated in her country, hated everywhere. I met her and she was like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah. Like she was it's so weird, sweet. Right? Yeah. And it's the it's same weird. with you. You're such yeah. a good person. Thank you. And whenever we talk, I feel like you always have like insight to give me advice. Like I do envy that you're more spiritual than me. I want to be, but I'm just You'll like. You'll be. If you hang out with me more, you're going to get there. I know You're if we live in the there. same city, I feel like we'd be doing like ayahuasca together and like speaking to like, I don't, maybe not ayahuasca, but <laughs> troops yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you filter out the people in our industry that you don't want to be around? Because even before we started filming this today, we were talking about some oh, bad yeah. eggs in the in the industry. We oh, won't yeah. name names, but there's a lot of crazy shit happening behind the scenes. People we know right now too. Yeah. Um. And what made you let me in specifically? <laughs> Let's get personal. I don't know. I I don't know. I have a soft, I think for you, I, ha I have a soft spot for younger LGBT people, which is why I was trying to, you know, be friendly with Ryan and Calvin and all of them in London before they like turned their backs on me. But I, I, I always see myself as like this older sister, like to you guys. And I always want to like, I'm a Cancerian. Like, you know, how Joey's like that too. He wants to always help everybody and hold everybody tight yeah. and, and lo be loving and be the family man and so I see that because I've been on, I'm like the old lady of YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2009. Like, You're an OG. It, it's me and like Chris Crocker and Tyler Oakley were the only ones back then. <laughs> it's oh my true. God, Chris Crocker. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And, and Buck Hollywood. Michael Buckley. Oh my God, yeah. Remember? Yeah, that was like the, like the first five of, <laughs> five of us. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. That's what's so crazy as I just realized before I was even trans. You used to watch him? And, and far before a YouTuber. No, I watched you. Oh, did you? And him. But, but oh, all yeah. you guys, yeah. yeah. Not really ever Tyler Oakley. He was kind of annoying to me. No shade. I just was not my cup of tea. But like, what? <laughs> I, I can say this online. Why not? It's your, your podcast. Interestingly enough, supposedly Tyler Oakley's father emailed me one day, like two weeks ago. Did I tell you this? No. I got an email. I don't know if it's true, but it, it I mean, it probably, I don't know why somebody would have been faking to be Tyler Oakley's dad. And he wrote me an email saying, um, you know, my son is a very, you know, influential U LGBT YouTuber, and I'm so sad that he doesn't see, you know, the crazy ways that the left is going. Wow. And I'm, I'm so what? glad that you're speaking out. Tyler Oakley's dad. Oh, that's so crazy. I don't want to say that that's a fact, because I don't know. Right. But I don't think anyone would, like, fake being that's his so dad. That's so specific. Yeah. That's <laughs> very specific. Email. If I... anything, maybe fake being another YouTuber or right, something, but, not but Tyler like, their dad. dad. Yeah. That is, and he, of all people... If someone wanted to fake being, well, he's like, from Michigan. Michigan's a red state, isn't it? It's it's purple. Well, it's purple, but I guess. That's true. But, but there's a lot of people up there that are Lansing. You know. I think he's from. I think Lansing's okay. pretty red. But yeah, um, and if they were gonna pick a random LGBT influencer to pretend to be their parent, they'd maybe pick someone else. Like know. why Tyler Oakley? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But either way, even if it wasn't really him, it the email still made sense. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, it was crazy. But uh, but yeah. As far as like letting you in. I think you let me in at the same time. So it wasn't yeah. like something that I was like, oh, okay, my. it was more like, I think we were just both friends with Jacqueline, right? Maybe is that how it was? Yeah, anyone Jacqueline was? sees as a good person, I'm yeah. going to just instinctively kind of be like, okay, you know what I Jacqueline mean? Jacqueline has pretty good view of character. I, I think she's got a pretty, pretty good, um, what do you call it? Sense of character, whatever the word is. And yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the thing about her, I respect that like, I know she probably gets hate for being our friend. I, I, I agree with that. I think she does. Yeah. Yeah. And and to me, it's like there are certain people that really fold with that, you know, and, and I mean, no, she doesn't. There's been people I know I've seen in your life that you've been friends with that have folded under that. Yep. And have given all of in. them like like so a good hurtful. 50 of them. Yeah. I talked to you about that. Yeah. Let's name names. <laughs> no, <laughs> we won't. I, name already, names. I already named three of them. But um. but that's so hurtful. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, it's understandable with the younger ones like Calvin and them. I understand it. I don't think it's right, but I understand it because they're very young and very impressionable. And they... there's been some older ones too, though, oh, that yeah. I've seen. Oh and, yeah, and that's kind of been, you know, them aside. You've told me some other names where I'm like, oh, it's that's sad. unfortunate. Yeah, it's sad, but 
I, I, I learned something years ago from a YouTuber that I was friends with, who I looked up to, who was like the reason I started making videos. And I remember he had told me, somebody had asked him in an interview one time, like, how do you deal with the hate? And he says, the same way I deal with the praise. I don't let it define me. Yeah. You ha that's how you, ha you have to be like that when you're in this industry. You can't let either side, negative or positive, influence your, the way you see yourself. Yeah. And then you're good. You're golden. I feel the same way. Yeah. I always say that. I always say, like, I don't believe a hate comment just like I don't believe a, an, in an, a yeah. love comment, a, yeah, yeah. a nice comment, because yeah. at the end of the day, that person does not know you. Yep. They have no fucking clue. No. And even as, like, you're very open online and <clears> stuff. <throat> I'm very open. People know a lot about me, but it's still you're seeing this. Much. Yeah. 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 You're seeing through such a small window. And it's edited. And it's edited. Right. And it's lit, well lit. <laughs> and we have lighting and see a camera. See him in the, in the bathroom, in the, other in the room. kitchen lighting. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is the format that I've been the most like. Um, Raw. Yeah. At this point, you're going to be like episode four or five coming out on this, on this podcast. And I've never really had like long form conversations like this with people. It's been the most open I've been. I feel like people are going to learn more about me from this than anything else. But yeah. But it's true. You you don't believe the hate comments because you don't believe the love comments because it's like you have to have you have to be have to have both because yeah. otherwise you're because even if you oh, I don't let the negative comments define me okay, but if you're letting the positive ones then you have like an ego. Oh, but but what happened with you? Like all of a sudden they turned on you like that one day and then it hit you right. Oh yeah. And yeah. then you had a deal. And then with I'm that. calling Ariel and I'm like, oh my god. And you had a deal, but then I told you you can't let it define you. No. And, and then you learned that was your lesson right there. One hundred percent. And yeah. you have to and you have to go through that. And I I feel like growing up really prepared me for what I do now like growing up I was like the faggot and I was bullied and I was jumped all the time I grew up fighting and it's like I needed to go not saying kids should be bullied but I need to go through that to yeah. do what I do now because now nothing fucking affects me of course especially after like that and, and everything else it's like <clears throat> now I'm like so good I'm so comfortable in life now and I see that in you too oh yeah it's like Thick -ass skin. yeah you're oh, yeah. you're a very like you're I feel like you're at a very good place in your life I think so and yeah. I think my energy has shifted over the last five years, like since I've known you too. Like in, I've gotten a lot way? more calm, like a lot more calm in a, yeah. a lot of different ways. Yeah. I think the move I, to Florida was a big one. It's hard for me yeah. to say because I've gotten to know you more in the past couple of years. I can't really reference you five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah, right, We were true. more of like internet acquaintances back then. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's, it's all <laughs> a journey. Do you see yourself doing YouTube and what you do forever? Is this a bridge to something I got, else? I got asked that by the, the girl that I'm kind of dating uh and I didn't know how to answer that I was like I don't know maybe I'll write a book <laughs> I guess. you should write a book I was offered and I just didn't want to do it I was lazy but it was more I don't know you know how it is like you would they offer you to write a book it's not gonna they don't pay well usually and it's a lot of work and then yeah it's like I could say what I want more of what I want in a podcast or a video yeah. I'll have more people re re watch it than would read my book so it's, if I'm not gonna make money off it what's the point of wasting all that effort and sitting at the computer hurting my back like I'm not doing it I think it's more of like the is it the ego thing for you? It's like, I wrote a book. Look at it. Well, like, for some people. Thing. No, for some people, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I get it. I yeah. get it. I mean, it's like, maybe it's just some people want to add, like, but then again, actually, if it does sell well, you make <clears> a lot of money. Like, Michael Malice, one of my best friends, he, I won't I won't say specifically what it was, but he told me um, recently, like, the other day when we were hanging out, he's like, I made this much in just like a couple weeks off my book. And I was then like, that's, then that's worth it. I was like, wait, of what? Course. You made that much? Yeah. Why am I buying dinner? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of shit. No, so, for sure. Then yeah. it'll be worth it. I think that's next for me. I want to get this podcast off the ground. Then I'll do a book. But I think you should definitely write a book. I think I, I think that maybe I should do that next year. <laughs> maybe <laughs> next, next, year. next year. Next year. But I agree. It's so hard to answer. Like, if you want to be a YouTuber forever, because first of all, is YouTube going to be around forever? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't know. And maybe I'll get sick of it. Have you ever wanted to quit? Honestly, no. Really? I, I really love, I'm an artist. I've always, okay. this has just happened to be my medium for the last 10 years. But wow. I've always been about self-expression, whether it was writing poetry or painting or filmmaking, like something. I always was doing something with my left side of the brain. Is it yeah, the yeah, left yeah. side of the brain? Always. Or, I don't know. Actually, whatever yeah. it is. Whatever it is. The yeah. creative side of the brain. I was never good at science and math. Can't do it. So when my dad passed away, I got thrown into you. I like just threw myself into my work. Like I really got head, like head over heels into it. And then I started like the not for profit and I was working with like LGBT kids, uh, helping them like be more creative with their, with their energy and stuff like that. It's just where it is for me right now. Like you don't know either. You just know yeah. that you like, we, we, I think we know inherently that we're always going to be these types of people that are going to be thought leaders 
It's just that YouTube right now is the space to do that. Yeah. Is that the right way of, of saying it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and it can I think it can be perceived. Conversation starters. Yes. Start later. Yeah. It can be perceived as egotistical to <clears throat> say this, but you know my heart, I know my own heart. Um, I think that it's like important what we're doing. See, spirituality wouldn't say that though. I think your ego is saying that you're egotistical. But I think spirituality okay. would say that this is a good thing that you know that this is your place in the world, right? Like yeah. you were put here and you're an old soul and you're meant to help people. If you're not doing that. Buck said that to me today, I'm an old soul. It's I true. Think. Every trans person, every gay person is an older soul, for sure. Like a random ass person living this kind of life at this, I mean, now it's easier. But you know, like living a, a difficult life is not a, a young soul lesson, that kind of thing. Yeah, you're so right. So when like the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, spirituality, when you're put here and you say you say to the universe, thank you for giving me these gifts, I'm going to use them, that's not an ego thing. <clears throat> that's a gratitude thing, I would think, right? When you're not using those gifts, I feel like that's an ego thing. Oh, I'm better than that or something like But no. That, yeah, that's you a know, great way it, to say it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, right? it's perspective and it's almost yeah. me like, See, I don't like I, what I've been working on lately is like <clears throat> I'm sick of like apologizing for things before I do them. So the way I was just like, it's going to sound egotistical, but hear me out. It's like, well, that's why I actually, I'm you. not going to apologize. It's no. just about self-awareness. If there's people messaging me on a daily basis, on an hourly basis that I saved their life or that mm -hmm. I mean a lot to them or even that I turn their day around. Clearly, that is my purpose. Yes. So clearly, I know what this is. And you what know what's your purpose? Because the, tra the, tra the trajectory, sorry, I can't talk, is going like this. When you're when yeah. you're. When your alignment, when your life and your purpose align, like the purpose of your life and when you figure out the purpose of your life and you and you align that, right? Yeah. It just, it, it skyrockets. It's yeah. always how it, yeah. My life this, just which is keeps why, getting this better. Is, yeah, this is what the tattoo is about. Like stop this looking in the wrong doors. It's about doorways. Mm. It's like stop stop trying to open the door that's closed. It's not the door that's, that's meant for you. Like any door that, that closes, all those people that left your life, don't even bother looking in the rearview mirror. Keep going. It's true. 100%. I really believe that. And that's every lane you're in, any lane yeah. you're in, you know. I think that's a great way to end the that's podcast. That's a perfect way to end it. One hundred percent. Thank you so much for coming, Ariel. Thank I, you. I I truly consider you a friend. I think that you also are so important in the space that you're holding and and your messaging and what you're doing for people. And I see you as an ally. You know, I don't see a lot of people's allies. I'm very much in my own <laughs> world, right. but I see you and I see what you post, I see what you go for, and like I think you're very important. So thank you thank so you. much for coming on my show, Ariel. Thank you.